machine learning is in many areas of our life, even if we don't notice it. For example, by translating some text online or in a spam field in your email account. But what about industrial automation? How to get access to industrial data, apply machine learning to this data, and control the system depending on the results? The intelligent core of any industrial system is a PLC. It reads the signals from sensors, run application logic, and control actuators. Let's discuss such exciting topic as a running of uh, machine learning on a PLC. But you should not forget that real-time performance is extremely important for PLC application. Executing of machine learning algorithms has not to disturb real-time capabilities of the device. First, let's take a look to codices. What is it? Codices is the most popular programming system for the PLC in the world. It consists of two parts. The first part is the programming system itself, or Codices IDE. The second part is Codices runtime system, which runs on the device itself. Codices programming system runs on a PC, and user can develop, compile, debug, and download IC application in the PLC. Additionally, user configures I.O. system and design visualization screens in Codices IDE if needed. Codices Runtime System is a counterpart of Codices ID and runs the unloaded IC application. Many device type run Codices. There are compact controllers, standard PLC system, process control systems, and some others. Codesys runtime can also run on different CPU architectures like x86, ARM, and almost all other platforms. Various operating systems can be used on the device as well. The most popular combination for at least last five years is Linux and ARM, which opens brilliant opportunities for the software functionality and performance. And one of the great examples of such platform is NVIDIA Jetson Nano. NVIDIA is a world leader in artificial intelligence technologies, and therefore we have selected JSON Nano platform to prove our concept. Let's take a look at the system architecture. We have JSON Nano with connected camera and display. In JSON Nano itself, we run real-time Linux kernel and Docker container runtime. We create two Docker containers, one for Codesys runtime system and one container for gesture recognition based on the MIT Handla TSM model. We use OPCVA to communicate between two containers because it's a standard interface for PLC application and no adaptation is needed on the codices control side. This way we can transmit any data between IC application, which is written using classical application programming languages like structured text or ladder logic and any machine learning application which can be written in Python, for example. Real-time Linux kernel, which is mentioned on the previous slide, is based on the Primarity patch, which is a popular proven extension for Linux, which adds hard real-time to the PLC. Such real-time is a part of L4T, and these services install it using standard scripts from, from L4T and build the kernel. This service is a premium partner of Codices Group, and we received time-limited version of Codices runtime system for ARM platforms. We created Docker container to run Codices on Jetson Nano. To simplify initialization of such container, we created Docker Compose file and we made sure that real-time capabilities of a Codices control will be kept even by running the application within the controller. So since we didn't want to start from scratch with this project, um, we decided to do some research into uh, available open source models that are pre-trained for gesture recognition. Um, re relatively soon, we narrowed it down to two alternatives. Uh, first being a purpose-built model by NVIDIA for, that is used for gesture detection and the other one is a model built by researchers from MIT Hahn Lab. The former is meant to be used in a cascaded approach, uh, the first step being an object detector that is trained for detecting hands on an image and then cropping that 
and out of the image and doing gesture recognition with this image in a two-stage process. Um, for this, uh, we used uh, NVIDIA's Transfer Learning Toolkit to use a ResNet 18 backbone as the object detection model. Um, we did the uh, transfer learning on the EgoHands dataset um, that is openly available. And uh, after, uh, after transfer learning the model, we did quantization and pruning. The quantization uh, has been done to floating point 16 instead of uh, integer 8 that would be appropriate only for Xavier, HAX and NX models since our hardware, the, non, the Nano, doesn't support int 8 inference. We did quantization to down to floating point 16 only. Um, so after after quantization and pruning, uh, we exported both models, the object detector that is trained for hand detection now, and the, the gesture recognition model to Tensor RT engines to be used uh, in inside a DeepStream app. DeepStream SDK is another app toolkit provided by NVIDIA, which makes uh, intelligent video analytics apps easy to uh, develop. And we integrate the hand detector and the gesture recognition model into a, a DeepStream app uh, to evaluate the performance. So after we, we integrated the two models into a DeepStream app, uh, we evaluated the usability and we found that unfortunately on the Nano, um, this approach had uh, constantly low FPS, um, so around 10 frames per second and below. And the load on the GPU was constantly around 100%, which in turn lead to, uh, leads to current and voltage warnings, which again lead to a limiting of the performance of the model. So as a result, we also evaluated the other approach, uh, which is the model uh, trained by researchers from MIT Han Lab. Um, this approach was built on OpenCV pipeline. So the first step uh, was to find a container image that uh, is already that already includes OpenCV and other dependencies that are necessary for uh, this uh, model. So after installing all the necessary dependencies, we started the main program to evaluate the, the performance of this model. And um, compared to our first approach, this model had a much higher frame rate and also the usability was quite good. So we decided to go further with this model. Um, which meant that uh, we needed to include the OPC UA connectivity into this, into this program um, to transfer recognized gestures to the OPC UA server to control the machine. And how we can make sure that the device really works in real time? For this, the services has a great product which is called Real Time Test Framework. Real Time Test Framework consists of several parts. First part is a real-time test application. It runs in the PLC directly. Second part is network analyzer, which is connected to the PLC using Ethernet. And having such system, we can check not only the jitter of the tasks in the PLC, we also can check the stability and jitter of the transmission via Ethernet. PLC works cyclically. It means that we execute control code if defined cycle time. And stability of such cycle is really critical for the real-time application. With a real-time test framework, we measure task data, but not only this. In every controlled cycle, we transmit the frame to network analyzer and calculate the transmission data as well. To find out minimum cycle time for the PLC, we calculate minimum round trip time. It means in the PLC, we send the frame every cycle to network analyzer. Network analyzer sends the frame back and we measure the time between sending the frame and receiving the frame in the PLC. Gesture recognition and codices control are running in the PLC. What we need to do to open our test project, scan 
network to find Jetson Nano. Select it, download. Test application, wait a little bit. Run test application and after that we will be able to set up test parameters. Test parameters are set up in Codices visualization. Just open it. You can see here the list of all Ethernet adapters available in the device. Let's select Ethernet 0. This adapter is used to connect network analyzer. We can open it. And before we start the test, we select some test parameters. For example, frame size. We define also allowed task jitter and allowed transmission jitter, allowed round trip time, just for test. We also execute round trip test. Now we are ready for the test. Let's start. We can see the test is executed and the values are calculated on that. The test was very short because it's just one iteration. And we can see that maximum task jitter is 27 microseconds and transmission jitter is 39 microseconds. Round trip time is up to 430 microseconds. Of course, we have executed long final test. Real time performance with our preempt RT patch is presented here. Fortunately, if we run real time kernel, the results are much better. Without machine learning, the task jitter and transmission jitter are about 70 microseconds. Round trip time is about 600 microseconds. If we run machine learning in parallel, then task jitter is 135 microseconds, transmission jitter is 116 microseconds, and round trip time is about 700 microseconds. But these results are still very good. 